Question number 24. Summarize balance sheet of ONP as on 31st March 2012 or as under. So come down below. Miscellaneous expenses consist of items other than preliminary expenses. Guys, if it is other than preliminary expenses, I cannot write it off against securities premium. Investments in O Limited represent 1,25,000 shares of P. And investments in P Limited are considered to be worth 30 lakhs. P Limited will take over O. Guys, O has shares in P and P is taking over O. So selling company has shares in purchasing company. Be careful on this. On the basis of intrinsic value of shares in, the, in, respect of, in their respective books of accounts. Prepare statement showing the number of shares to be allotted by O to P and the balance sheet of O after the absorption of P. Guys, P Limited is taken over by O. Oh, I'm sorry guys. So O Limited is a purchasing company. P Limited is a selling company. O holds shares in P. So purchasing holds shares in selling company again. So let's turn. PC computation is by intrinsic value method. Not many values given to you. Purchase consideration. Intrinsic value method. We need to calculate intrinsic value of both companies O and P. That is net assets available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. O and P. Start with the assets. The first asset existing is fixed assets. Fixed assets, there is no changes given. So take it as 110 and 50. Next one is investments. Come down below. Investments in O Limited represent 1,25,000 shares of P. So I have to multiply this with intrinsic value of P so that I'll get what is the value of investments. But P Limited's investments directly given to you as 30 lakhs. This I'll fill it up later. Current assets, no revaluations given. Take them at book values itself. 40.25 and 3.25. Miscellaneous expenses cannot be considered because their realizable values are zero. I can't total your O column, but I can total my P column. P column total is 83.25. This column I can't total unless I get this value of investments here. Outside liabilities, two outside liabilities given there. Twelve percent debentures, eleven and five point five creditors. Eight and two point seven five liabilities total is nineteen and eight point two five calculate your net assets. This will be net assets attributable to equity shareholders as well because there is no preference share capital given to us. I can't find out O's net assets, but I can calculate P's net assets, which is seventy five. Divided by number of equity shares. Number of equity shares in O. I am writing everything in lakhs still. O is 2.5. P is 5. IV per share or intrinsic value per share. Net assets divided by number of shares. P is 15. 
Once you know P's intrinsic value, you can substitute into your investments. 1,25,000 shares of 15 rupees each. One twenty five into fifteen. It is eighteen point seven five. Eighteen lakh seventy five thousand. Write it as eighteen point seven five. Total assets is one sixteen nine minus outside liabilities of nineteen one fifty. One fifty divided by two point five is sixty. Now you have intrinsic values of both companies. Get the exchange ratio. Exchange ratio is equal to intrinsic value of selling company P by intrinsic value of purchasing company O. Fifteen by sixty, or simply I can call it as one share for every four shares held. P is taken over by O, so I have to issue shares to the shareholders of P. So number of shares to be issued. By O, how many P limited shares are there? Five. Five lakhs. Exchange ratio one by four, one point two five. But should I issue the entire one point two five? If I issue one point two five shares to the shareholders of P, <coughs> O himself holds one one lakh twenty five thousand shares. That is nothing but twenty five percent. That means even O will receive the P C. Why giving and taking it back as PC? Let's try to identify only the PC to outside shareholders. So deduct less percentage holding of O in P. One lakh twenty-five thousand shares out of total five lakh shares is twenty-five percent. Oh, one point two five into twenty five percent. Zero point three one two five. So my number of shares to be issued to outside shareholders. Only to outside shareholders, I'll issue nine point zero point nine three seven five. But to get PC, I need issue price per share. Issue price per share in O. O will issue each share at its intrinsic value. O's intrinsic value is sixty. So PC to outside shareholders. Point nine three seven five into sixty. Point nine three seven five into sixty is fifty. Six point two five. S P C to outside shareholders. Carefully put down the discharge. Zero point three one two five. 
discharge of PC, there is only PC to equity shareholders and no one else. There is no preference shareholders to be given. Equity share capital and securities premium. Each share is 10 rupees. Number of shares to be issued is 0.9375. So 9.375 is my equity share capital. Securities premium is multiplied by 50. 0 0.9375 into 50 is 40.875. Total is 56.25. And that is the discharge of PC guys. Once we have identified PC, next thing that we have to identify is nature of amalgamation and method of accounting. There is a revaluation to the investments which happen. Nature of amalgamation is purchase, method of accounting is purchase method. When I say purchase method, we have to talk about goodwill or capital reserve. How do we get goodwill or capital reserve? We have to compare net assets taken over with your PC. But guys, to get the total PC, this PC, what we have given is only to outside shareholders. But <laughs> outside shareholders are only 75%. 25% of the shares already existing in O were acquired at a cost of, check your balance sheet. Balance sheet O limited on the asset side, investments was 16.25. That is the cost of acquiring 25% shares in P. <coughs> So PC to outside shareholders outside shareholders PC is 56.25 which we just calculated plus cost of investments Cost of investments in the balance sheet of O Limited is 16.25. This will give us a total PC of 72.5. We need to compare this with net assets taken over. What is the net assets taken over? P Limited's net assets came down to 75 leaves us with a capital reserve. I'm paying lower PC than the net assets taken over. So my capital reserve is 2.5. Guys, earlier we said whenever you're talking about net assets method, PC calculation and nature of amalgamation is purchased. We don't have to go for goodwill and capital reserve calculation. Directly the goodwill added in net assets calculation will be the goodwill. Here I can't take that. Simple logic is because my PC what I paid is to outside shareholder based on the net assets. But this cost of investment this is not based on net assets. And this could have been purchased earlier where the net assets could have been lower as well. So I can't calculate using the same logic. Saying that the PC should be, sorry, the goodwill should be the same amount of goodwill what is included in the net assets. You can't use it with intercompany holdings. Once you get this information, you can start drafting the balance sheet. Balance sheet of O. I was on whatever particular date is 
mention there. Equity and liabilities. Shareholder funds. Under shareholder funds, we have capital as well as reserves. Share capital is equity share capital. Already O exists with 25. Additionally, <coughs> my equity share capital is 9.35. So this will be 34.375. Reserves and surplus. Start with your reserve already given in the balance sheet. Check the reserve in the balance sheet already provided. The reserve already provided in the balance sheet is 131. Other than that, I have a securities premium. Arising from the shares which are issued now at a premium. Do not cancel it against preliminary expenses. He clearly said miscellaneous expenses are other than preliminary expenses. If they were preliminary, I would have cancelled against securities premium. Since they are clearly given as other than preliminary expenses, I cannot ca cancel this. Capital reserve which we just calculated is 2.5. Preliminary expenses... I'm sorry, miscellaneous expenses is a negative reserve. Show it as a negative sign. Miscellaneous expenses is, how much is the amount of miscellaneous expenses? I can't take over the purchasing selling company, so only 8.5. With that we come to the end of shareholders funds. It's amalgamation by nature of purchase. So I'm not taking over selling companies reserves at all. Non-current liabilities. Only one non-current liability exists. That is your 12% debentures. There's no specific discharge given. So... It's just simple addition of the figures, 16.5. Current assets, I'm sorry, current liabilities, under current liabilities, I have only one current liability, that is your creditors. Sum total of my creditors, it 8 and 2.75 is 10.75. Balance sheet total on the liability side. Come to the assets. Non-current assets. First non-current asset is tangible fixed asset. Tangible fixed assets, 110 plus 50, 160. Other non-current assets, investments, P limited investments were taken over. O limited investments already got cancelled. Only P limited investments which are taken over that is 30. Finally your current assets. 40.25 plus 3.25. 43.5. Total 233.5.
that will bring us to the end of the balance sheet. Yes, guys, let's turn to the 25th question. Question number 25. The following is a summarized balance sheet of C and D as on 31st March 2012. Balance sheet given to you. Come to your asset side. Investments, they are cross holdings. C holds 3000 shares in D and D holds 9000 shares in C. So there's a cross holding existing there. Come down below. Stock of C includes good worth 3 lakhs purchased from D, which were purchased at a profit, which made a profit of 20% on selling price. Or the 3 lakhs is basically purchase price of D, sorry, purchase price of C, and it is nothing but the selling price of D. So D made a profit of 20% on that. So that is 60,000. But we have to see if it is left out in the closing stock. My unrealized profit is only stock reserve on closing stock. This is a total goods sold. Stock of C includes goods. Okay, I'm sorry guys. The unrealized profit is directly 60,000. 20% into 3 lakhs, 60,000. As on 31st March, C owed D 1,20,000. That must be included in the current liabilities as well as the debtors. Intercompany owings cancel. C Limited absorbs D Limited on the basis of intrinsic value of shares and both the company shares as on 31st March 2012. After absorption, C Limited declared a dividend of 12% and dividend tax is 10%. Show the balance sheet of C after the absorption of D Limited and the workings for number of shares to be issued. So again intrinsic value method, go on for the PC calculations. We have to get net assets attributable to equity shareholders. There is no preference share capital, so net assets are net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Start with your assets. No change in the values. 30 lakhs and 1 lakh 50 thousand. Investments. 3,000 shares into intrinsic value of D and 9,000 shares into intrinsic value of C. We can't fill up now anyways. We'll fill it up later, no problem.
Next, debtors do not cancel intercompany owings. Intercompany owings should be cancelled after takeover. <coughs> I am still calculating PC for takeover. So, 8 lakh 70 and 4 lakhs 50. Similar thing for stock. Unrealized profit can't be cancelled. It is cancelled after takeover. So, not now. 4 lakh 40 and 6 lakh 30. Bank balance is 4 lakh 74,000, 2 lakh 70,000. This is total assets. I know we can't total the assets, just we'll see that later on. Come to outside liabilities. We have two outside liabilities existing there. First one in the form of current liabilities. That is 6 lakhs and 2 lakhs 70. Second one in the form of 14% debentures. Nil and 9 lakhs. Guys, one second guys. Before absorption, C Limited declared a dividend of 12% along with a dividend distribution tax of 10%. Guys, this will change my bank figures. This should change your bank. It is before absorption. Before absorption, C Limited declared a dividend of 12% and a dividend distribution tax of 10%. Check if C Limited is declaring a dividend of 12%, so 4 lakh 50,000, sorry, 45 lakhs into 12%, the dividend which C Limited declares is 5 lakh 40,000. 5 lakh 40 is the dividend minus dividend distribution tax 54,000. So the cash which is given there, 4 lakh 74. Okay guys, it's only declared guys, let's not take it as paid because the cash is not sufficient there. I'll take the same bank values because I'm not actually considering this an additional liability I'll become proposed dividend. Guys, I know it should be a dividend receivable for the shareholders of D, just ignore that. Replace it towards the last. Proposed dividend including tax. 5 lakh 40 plus 54, 5 lakh 94,000. Five lakh ninety four thousand. There should be a dividend receivable. For D, if C Limited is declaring 12% dividend, D holds 9,000 shares in C. Each share of 100 rupees, so 9 lakh into 12% is 1 lakh 8,000.
total liabilities are 11 lakh 94,000 and 11 lakh 70,000. This will give us net assets. We can't find out the net assets because we don't have total of assets. But one I know that if I did divide it with the number of equity shares. What are the number of equity shares? 45,000 for C and 15,000 for D. This will give me my intrinsic values. This will give me my intrinsic value of shares. I don't know the value of investments. Take this as X and Y. Place the values 3000 shares of D held by C. D's intrinsic value is Y, 3000Y and 9000X. <coughs> now identify the values. Is seven lakh eighty four thousand plus three thousand Y. Deduct eleven lakh ninety four thousand from that. That will give us forty five lakhs ten thousand ninety thousand plus three thousand Y. This one one lakh fifty six twelve thirty. 16, 17 lakh 8,000, 16 lakh 8,000 plus 9,000 X minus 11 lakh 70,000, 4 lakh 38,000 plus 9,000 X. Now you can get two values to so identify X and Y guys. Net assets 45 lakhs 90,000 plus 3000Y divided by 45,000 is equal to X and solve this 1,2000 plus 1 by 15Y is equal to X. And this one is four lakhs thirty eight thousand plus nine thousand X divided by fifteen thousand is equal to X. One or two. Divide by 15, plus 3 by 15x is equal to 
Bye. Substitute x 29.2 plus 3.5 into 102 plus 1 by 15 y is equal to y. Solve for y 29.2 plus 306 by 5. 306 by 5 is 6 are 30. 61 point. Seventy five Y is equal to Y. Take into the other side, this will become seventy two by seventy five. So I can first cancel it. One by twenty five. So this will be twenty four by twenty five Y is equal to total is ninety point six. Or y is equal to 90.6 into 25 by 24. Approximately triple 1. Approximately triple 1.
x is 1.8.28. Exchange ratio intrinsic value of D by intrinsic value of C Y by X or it is Y is 94.167 divided by 108.28. Identify number of shares to be issued. Issued by C. Number of shares in D are 15,000 into 94.167 divided by 108.28. Round it off, write the balance as fraction shares. This is 13050. And fraction shares are four point nine. I'll talk about this part, okay? One second, guys. Let's write the total thing together. One, one, 13,044.92. Because the intercompany holding, holdings now, let's start cancelling. Less percentage holding of C in D. C holds 3,000 shares out of 15,000 shares. So, 3,000 by 15,000 is 20%. So deduct 20% from this 13044.92 into 20%. I guess this is 26. nine. I guess. It's not a 8 point something. 608.94. Nine eight four or something. So we get PC number of shares to number of shares to be issued to outside shareholders. Less number of shares already held already held by D D holds 9000 shares already net number of shares to be shown I'll have to issue only 1435.94 shares. Out of this there are some fractions as well.
issue price per share. C is issuing shares at their intrinsic value. 108.28 Purchase consideration multiply and get the answer Try to identify the discharge. Equity share capital round off. I'll issue only 14.35 shares. Each share I issued at 108. But take 100 rupees as equity share capital. Balance as securities premium. Securities premium is 14.35 shares into 8.28. There is some cash for fraction shares. Point 0.94 into 108.28. Point 0.94 into 108.28 should be coming to some 100 or something. 1,43,500. This is your equity share capital. I'll come to the discharge of PC. No confusions, nature of amalgamation always purchase. Intercompany holdings exist, <clears throat> especially when selling holds and purchasing. You can't have merger at all. Method of accounting is purchase method. Identify your goodwill or capital reserve. Start with total PC. PC to outside shareholders. One lakh fifty-five thousand four eighty-three point five eight. Plus cost of investments. Investments purchased by. C in D at four lakh fifty thousand. My total PC is six lakh five thousand four eighty three point five eight. Compare this with net assets taken over. My net assets taken over from D, I can't take over intercompany holdings 
balance 4 lakh 38 thousand of net assets i'll take over we shall leave away with a goodwill of 1 lakh 17483.58 One lakh sixty seven four eighty three point five eight. Continue with the balance sheet. Balance sheet of C as on 1-4-2012 post takeover. Equity and liabilities. Shareholders funds. share capital already existing share capital is 45 lakhs plus check your discharge 1 lakh 43,500 this will be 46 lakh 43,500 reserves and surplus I have a securities premium now which I got Securities premium is double one eight eight one point eight. Next one is a general reserve. No change in the value of general reserve, four lakhs. But my PL will change because I propose dividend. My p and is is 7,34,000 minus proposed dividend of 5,94,000 that will leave me with a balance of 1,40,000 and so leave me with the p and balance of 1,40,000 Non current liabilities fourteen per cent debentures nine lakhs. Current liabilities addition of both eight lakh seventy minus intercompany owing one lakh twenty. So eight lakh seventy minus one lakh twenty is seven lakh fifty. I also have a proposed dividend to be written. We have to cancel it with this dividend receivable because this dividend, whatever you are supposed to pay, was supposed to be received by D, which you are cancelling to the extent of one lakh eight thousand. Four lakh eighty six thousand. Non current assets. Tangible fixed assets thirty one lakh fifty intangible.
tangible assets. Goodwill. Goodwill we are already have calculated here 167,483 plus stock intercompany owings or intercompany transaction 3 lakh stock 20% profit stock should be reduced and transferred to goodwill 60,000 20% of 33 lakhs 227,483. Point five eight current assets current asset first one is debtors reduce it by one lakh twenty intercompany owings. 1 lakh 20 out, 12 lakhs. Stock 60,000. We have already transferred it to goodwill. Unrealized profit 20 lakh 10,000. Bank balance reduced with the amount of fraction shares paid. Fraction shares paid was 100 some change. So the balance will appear as 7,43,000 some change. Reduce it by that 100 rupees odd for fraction shares.
Let's guys go for the next one. 29. Summarize balance sheet of X and Y is given to you. X, check your asset side. They have investments in Y limited 60,000 shares purchased for 6 lakhs. X holds 60% of the paid up share capital of Y and the balance being held by a foreign company. MOU has been entered into with the foreign company to give effect for the following. The shares of the foreign company will be sold to X at a price per share being calculated by capitalizing the yield at 15%. So yield divided by 15% should be the purchase consideration there. And for this purpose, yield would mean 50% of pre-tax profits of the last 3 years which is 12, 18 and 24. Average is 18 again. Average should be 18 and 50% of that is yield. So 9 lakhs is yield. Yeah, first second, yeah. Okay, so the average tax rate is 40% is said. So these are pre-tax profits. First divide the pre-tax profits, I guess. No, yield for this purpose would mean 50% of average pre-tax profit. So yield, take it as pre-tax only, tax rate, ignore it. Non necessary. Actual cost of foreign company shares is 4 lakh 40 and the gains will be taxable at the rate of 20%. Tax will be deducted from the proceeds and paid to government by X and 50% of the consideration will be remitted to the foreign company by X and also any cash for fraction shares allotted. For the balance consideration, X would issue its shares at its intrinsic value. So you need to calculate X, y, X Limited's intrinsic value and issue the shares to Y. It is decided that X will absorb Y simultaneously by writing down the fixed assets by 10% and balance sheet figures include a sum of 1 lakh due from Y to X. Stock includes 1 lakh 50,000 purchase from Y which is sold at cost plus 20%. percent one fifth on cost is 1 sixth on sales. So 1 sixth on 1 lakh 50,000 is 25,000. The 25,000 is a profit, unrealized profit which should be added to goodwill, reduced from stock. Entire arrangement was put through from the concerned effective from 1 4 and you are required to indicate how the arrangement will be recorded in the books of X and also prepare the balance sheet after absorption of Y. First calculate the intrinsic values guys then we'll go for the PC calculation. Identify intrinsic values of both X as well as Y. Actually what we need is only one company that is X. But to calculate X, what is he saying? X includes 60,000 shares of Y. So compulsory without having Y's intrinsic value, I cannot calculate X total net assets. Those investments in Y have to be valued at their intrinsic value. Intrinsic value per share. X and Y. Assets. Fixed assets. The adjustment to the value of fixed assets is only for the purpose of takeover. Take it as 60 lakhs and 18 lakhs. Investments. This is 60,000 shares into intrinsic value of Y. I'll place it later. Inventories. 30 lakhs and 25 lakhs. Debtors. Thirty-five lakhs and five lakhs. Cash in bank. Thirty-five 
13, 9 lakhs and 2 lakhs. Deduct your outside liabilities. Current liabilities are 30 lakhs and 2 lakh 50. And balance secured loans, last one. Twenty lakhs and two lakh First find out Y's total. Y's total assets are 50 lakhs. Liability is being 5 lakhs. This will give us net assets. 5 net assets are 45 lakhs. Divided by number of equity shares, 5 lakh and 1 lakh. Intrinsic value per share, 45. Place it here, 45 into 6. 27 lakhs. The intrinsic value of Y, we have to use it for valuing your investments in Y in the balance sheet of X. Ninety one lakhs Like eighty one, Intrinsic value is 28.2. Now go for the PC. Sixty percent is already held by X, balance held by foreign company. That forty percent we have to acquire from foreign company. Check is valuing the shares by capitalizing the yield at 50 and for this purpose yield is taken as 50% of average pre-tax profits. First calculate that average pre-tax profits. He never asked you to deduct tax though he has given the tax rate I won't use it. So average pre-tax profits is 12 plus 18 plus 24 by 3 
18. Don't take weighted average. We don't know the years. Either it can be year 1, year 2, year 3 or year 3, year 2, year 1. We never know that. So don't take. Average pre-tax profits are 18. Then my yield is 50% of average pre-tax profits, 9. My capitalization rate is 15. That means capitalized yield. Yield divided by capitalization rate is 60. So my PC to foreign company Forty percent. They hold only forty percent of sixty. I'm writing everything in now in full figures. This will become twenty-four lakhs then. Sixty lakhs into forty percent is twenty-four lakhs. This also in total figures. The yield is nineteen. How is he discharging the PC? First deduct the cost. Actual cost of investment 4,40,000. That means basically it's taxable gain. On 19,60,000. Taxable at the rate of 20%. Tax on gains. 20%. Balance. Consideration. This 3 lakh 92 will be remitted directly to the government. I have to give him 24 lakhs. Out of which 3 lakh 92 will be given to the government. Balance is 20 lakh 8000. This E minus H. Don't do 1960 minus 3 lakh 92. 24 lakhs minus 3 lakh 92. Balance PC is 20 lakh 8000. Check how is he settling the balance PC. 50% of the consideration after payment of tax is remitted to the foreign company by X and also cash for any fraction shares allotted. Balance consideration X will issue shares at intrinsic value. 50% in cash, 50% in shares. PC in cash, 50%. Ten lakh four thousand PC in equity shares of X ten lakh four thousand issue price per share at intrinsic value is said X issues each share at twenty eight point two. Number of shares to be issued and identify fraction shares. Ten lakh four thousand divided by twenty eight point two is.
Now, which guys you can take it as 35 602 as well and take fraction shares as 0.84 or take it as 35,600 and 2.84 as fraction shares. Check the discharge of PC. PC in equity shares. Equity share capital, each share is 10 rupees, total 35,600 shares allotted, 3,56,000 securities premium, thirty five thousand six hundred shares into 18.2 premium. PC in cash. Tax to government, we paid 3,92. Then we paid 50% of balance, 10,4. Also we paid cash for fraction shares. Two point eight four into twenty eight point two. This total, what we have to pay them is twenty four lakhs. Let's round it off guys to 80 so that you get a total of 24 lakhs. My nature of amalgamation is purchase. Method of accounting is purchase method. When it is purchase method, we have to identify goodwill or capital reserve. PC has two parts. One part of PC is what you pay to foreign company. Another part of PC is the PC is the cost of is the cost of investments already held. Cost of investments already held in Y is six lakhs. So the total combined is thirty lakhs, which is the total PC. Compare it with net assets taken over. However, should be adjusted with a few figures. Check. X limited will absorb Y limited simultaneously by writing down the fixed assets by 10%. That is the only adjustment guys. Remaining adjustments you don't have to consider. You already know net assets of Y as 45 lakhs. Just make adjustments for stock and fix the set. Net asset taken over. We already calculated net assets as 45 lakhs less fixed asset should be lower by 10 percent 1 lakh 80. If you reduce fixed assets we have to reduce even net assets stock should be reduced by the unrealized profit. What is the unrealized profit on stock? Check. 
debtors and creditors won't change goodwill guys your stock will change 150000 at cost plus 20% one fifth on cost is one sixth on selling price this will be 25000 Net asset taken over is forty two lakh ninety five thousand. Compare this with PC. PC to foreign company. PC to foreign company is twenty four lakhs. Cost of investment. Check your balance sheet. I have acquired it at six lakhs. So basically, comparing both, I should get a goodwill. No, oh, I'll get a capital to sum. I'm sorry. What is the total PC? Thirty lakhs. Net assets forty two lakh ninety five. Twelve lakh ninety five thousand is the amount of capital to sum. Go for the balance sheet, guys. Once you have completed that, get a capital reserve. Net assets being taken over after adjusting fixed assets downward revaluation and stocks unrealized profit. I get forty two lakh ninety five taken over with the PC. PC for sixty percent already held in held as investments for six lakhs. For the remaining forty percent to the foreign company, I paid twenty four. Total PC I paid is thirty. So I get a capital reserve as twelve lakh twelve lakh ninety five. Balance sheet start with equity and liabilities. Shareholder funds, share capital. Check what is the share capital of X. X share capital is fifty lakhs in the balance sheet plus new shares issued. Check the discharge three lakh. Fifty-six thousand. So add three lakh fifty-six thousand. Fifty-three lakh fifty-six thousand share capital. Reserves and surplus. Securities premium. Is there any securities premium already existing in the balance sheet? No. There's only a general reserve and a P&L. So the securities premium direct figure of six lakh forty seven nine twenty will appear. I also have a capital reserve which we just calculated in the previous working note, twelve lakh ninety five thousand. Other than that, I have two reserves: general reserve and PNL. General reserve and PNL already existing in the balance sheets are fifty lakhs and twenty lakhs. No change to these values. Non-current liabilities. Secured loans. Add both. Twenty-two lakh fifty. Net asset simple addition. Current assets, sorry, current liabilities. There's a small change. Intercompany owing should be eliminated. What is the total of current liability? Thirty-two lakh fifty. But out of thirty-two lakh fifty, saying intercompany owing is one lakh. A sum of one lakh rupee is due from Y to X. Cancel that one lakh. 
Balance will be only 31 lakh 50. Assets. Non-current assets. Tangible fixed assets. 60 lakhs plus 18 lakhs, 78 lakhs. Minus fixed assets are written down by 1 lakh 80. So reduce that 1 lakh 80 from that. That will be 76 lakhs 20,000. There is no intangible asset in anything. Directly go for current assets. Inventories should be reduced. Stock should be reduced with unrealized profit of 25,000. Strike it out. 25,000 from the value of inventories. 54,75,000. Total is 30 plus 25, 55 minus 24, minus 25. Debtors reduce it by 1 lakh 39. Cash, good amount of redu reductions are there. Cash total is 39 plus 2, 41. PC paid in cash, 3,92,10,4,080 rupees. Here that is 13,96,080. Strike out 13,96,080 from this. lakhs. Three thousand nine twenty. I'll give you the balance of balance sheet total. One nine six ninety eight nine twenty. 